Welcome back to the Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again Today's video, we are back on our Marin limited edition. But before I get to that, let's not forget about my guys, Super Clean. Always there for the channel since the beginning. We are gonna get together and do another 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Help monetize my channel. You get some awesome products. They're gonna send it straight to you. You only have to worry about anything. The only rules are you have to be from the US. So uh, I'll probably just do, I'll do a separate video for the giveaway. So keep a lookout for that. Subscribe, hit the bell, all that fun stuff. But uh, I think I'll do like funniest comment or something. That's what I did last time. APJ, hey, shout out to you, one of my longest followers. Uh, here's a cool little picture of all his stuff. And um, yeah, you could be the next one to win that sweet box of goodies. Now our Marin, as you can see, it's no longer a frame shifter. We have gone way more modern in a ton of different ways and we'll get into that right now. First and most importantly is gonna be safety. Now people overlook the Tetra, Tetro brakes. Tetro, there you go. <laughs> people overlook these. This is the R530. These are a pretty good mid-range. You'll find them on some pretty decent newer mid-2000 Cannondales. That's actually what this came off of. Versus the Shimano 105 brakes that were on this. They're almost 75 grams lighter. Um, these are around 330 grams. Those are almost 400. So there you go. Big savings right there. And you get a lot more stiffness in these brakes. You know. They make a lot of changes in these dual pivot brakes and versus something from, you know, the 90s, which is what this Shimano group set that was on this was. One big change I made that I really, uh, to be honest, I probably wouldn't have done if I was keeping this bike. So if you're, you are lucky enough to run into one of these, I wouldn't change it. The wheel set, I just sold it because it helped me pay for all the upgrades. Parts are hard to come by nowadays and the channel ain't monetized. So have to do what you have to do um, on the back side here. On the back wheel, you'll see we have just like an Alex base model. It's like an aero heavy rim. Anything that's gonna be aero and aluminum is gonna be heavier. And uh, it's got some decent bladed spokes. It's not horrible to tell you the truth. But as I mentioned, you're picking up weight when you swap those off. The old wheel set was actually Shimano 105 front and rear hubs. And I forget the hoops, but they were good hoops, good quality. And the best part was the weight only came down to 1,650 grams, and that's actually after I changed the hub on it. The hub was only a seven-speed cassette, and I changed it to an eight, nine, ten. So that gets you a little bit more weight because it's a bigger hub, but still crazy light for what it was. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is probably around 2,000 grams for this wheel set, front and rear. So you actually would lose a lot of weight just changing to a nicer wheel set. This is a budget bike, though, so that's where we're at with that. Of course, now the rest of the drivetrain we have also changed. Now, for the top, we'll get into the cockpit. Not only are we gonna get comfort, but you're getting all the luxuries of having modern setups. We have a MicroShift 9x3 set of STI shifters. Obviously, you got your shifters right here, up and down. Brake, nice and tight brakes, they feel great. I've had MicroShift before, always been very happy with it. Compatible with Shimano and SRAM. Easy peasy, really nothing difficult to set up. I like it has a really long hood on it. For somebody who has big hands, you can get a lot of comfort there. Next we did was the handlebars. Uh, these are Richie WCS, very nice lightweight ergo design where you have multiple positions all the way across. Again, comfort's a big thing to play, but also it's nice to save weight here. We did go wider with these. These are 31.8, the modern bars. Uh, the ones that came on it were only 28.6 diameter, a lot smaller. So in order to do that, you have to change to a threadless stem. As you can see, we've done that. Uno 7, that's the way to go. Any of my videos will actually have a link in the description. So I also did a threadless stem conversion to fit that. The one thing I did actually leave, a couple of things. I had the Shimano 105 headset stock, and I still have the Marin Light seat post in there. It's being a steel frame, it's gonna have a little bit of an odd diameter. I believe this is 26.0. 
I'd have to, I'll put it in the video just to be sure. But uh, very nice and lightweight. Saddle's pretty comfortable. I didn't feel like any need of changing that. I probably put uh, you know around 100 miles on the bike and not only is it very comfortable, but the steel frame and the wide tires, I know I've said this before, but it just soaks up the road. It makes everything so much com more comfortable. You don't, you know, when you're getting back into shape and you're on a really nice bike, it's kind of hard when it's stiff and it's beating you up and you're on trying to get those miles in, you know? So it's nice to have something like this. Not only do you have the whole complementary of the steel frame and the tires, no longer having to frame shift is a big deal to me too. A lot of new riders don't like reaching down and having to shift. So changing out to the new shifters, you could find these micro shifts, they're under $75 on Amazon. So that's a pretty good deal for the whole group. You could even get 10 speeds, they're all around the same price. Uh, they also go down to seven and eight speed. So to be fair, you didn't even have to change anything if you found something like this. You could just throw a set of shifters on it and take off the frames. All right, now we'll get into the group set, the drivetrain, the nitty gritty. We've swapped in, you can't see it now, but uh, I sold the Shimano crank and bottom bracket as a pair. Uh, Shimano 105 was on it before, obviously. Uh, it had a 5349 full size. What I have now is a triple 534030, I believe this is. I'm pretty sure. So this is a FSA Gossamer Road, pretty common, uh, square taper. Good mid-range stuff. It's, you know, you could get lighter, to tell you the truth, but um, if you're on a budget, I don't mind it at all. I think it's very nice, because it, I like the blacked out look that I've gotten, you know, to match the brakes and the seat and the stem and all that stuff. And it, you know, it just went perfectly with it. I like having the full range too. You have the, the big gear so you can go full speed the smallest gear for the big guys like me, or if you got a big mountainous area, it's a lifesaver. For the bottom bracket, what I replaced this was is like a good mid-range BB uh, UN52 sealed unit. You don't really have to worry about taking out or anything at any point unless you have to replace it, but they last a very long time. Cartridge unit comes in and out in a couple pieces, very easy to replace. Now for the back, we did a Shimano Claris. This is a long cage. You do pick up a little bit of weight going long cage, but that's, you know, kind of the benefit of being able to fit a much bigger cassette. Now we didn't go to the maximum of this Claris, and this is actually one of the reasons I like to use this the most. This Claris will fit an 1132 cassette. Pretty cool. What I have here is a Sunrace 1128 9 speed. Perfect for, you know, where we're at. Since we have the triple, I didn't feel the need to go as big as the 32. Of course, gold chain, gold chain mafia. Everybody knows about that. And to keep it, <laughs> I had this sitting around for a long time kind of keep the spirit of the old build. Um, I put a Shimano 105 triple front derailleur on there. Just a basic clamp on unit. And that pretty much is uh, the next step right here to gain a little weight and actually being practical is swapping on some good pedals with cages and baskets. A lot of people are scared of them. They think their feet will come out, but really, as you can see, the just naturally the weight will counterbalance if you ever did crash, I know from experience you will actually get your feet thrown out. So you won't get stuck. And you have the ability to lift up with your legs as you're pushing down with the other. It simulates, you know, having clip-ins without having to actually wear clip-in shoes because you will fall with clip-in shoes. That's almost a given everybody does in the beginning. Of course, uh, we did some nice bar tape here. This is actually super thick because I doubled it. I have two layers of green on this. Usually I'll get some gel stuff and put them on the top and on the drops. Usually you get a nice kit, they're like 20 bucks or something like that, 15 bucks. This is my last green bar tape, so I ended up just using that instead. Just, you know, budget, as I said, parts are getting hard to find. Uh, we did some normal sunlight colored cable. I always like to complement the bike. Green, sealed. You could get a whole roll of it, like 50 feet for, again, 20 bucks or something. You could do a ton of bikes. Or uh, I, I like to use white, too. I actually have a constant supply of white rolls coming in. That's kind of generally the color I like to use. But if it's a cool color like this, I'll, I'll get some blue or red or whatever to highlight it. For our shift cables, we just did some basic Shimano stuff, nothing super expensive, pretty basic, but the bike shifts super smooth. As I mentioned, it rides extremely comfortably. To be honest, uh, I'm actually getting rid of the bike today. I'm kind of sad to get rid of it, but I will be back again on a steel frame for sure. Even if, uh, you know, it's something like this that you don't really expect to be very high-end, it, it lives the moniker steel is real. It's 
it's one of the realest rides you're gonna have. It's I can't really explain how nice it is to not have to be chattered out to death with such a stiff frame and uh, being on something that kind of not many people know about. I'm a big Marin fan. This is, I've had a couple of these. Uh, usually I'll find larger frames and part them out because they always have such nice components on them. And you know, this one was no, no slouch or any bit of that. I'm pretty sure the whole entire thing was Shimano 105. Yes, even the brake levers that were on it previously were Shimano 105. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty hard to find nowadays, especially with the wheels and the hubs. You, you generally will get something like what we have now, just some, you know, plain Chinese style hubs that are on here, aluminum. They're going to be a little heavier. You're going to have to maintain them a little more likely. These are a little more tedious to true, but, you know, uh, if you did get lucky enough to find it, it's a great way to build it up super cheap. As I mentioned, the shifters are cheap, the wheels are cheap. Can't complain about really much anything on it. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. And I really do hope you guys take the chance to subscribe because you like this video. I got a ton more stuff coming out. As you can see over here in the corner, I got a little disc brake Cannondale hardtail I'm restoring as well. Hopefully get around to doing a headshot rebuild on it instead of a replacement this time. So please do like and subscribe, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Bye.